Homicides on both sides of the river tonight, where Louisville is recording its latest killing. Southern Indiana detectives respond to a teen fatally shot. What we know about the other teen arrested. Winter storm watches in effect for parts of Indiana and Kentucky does include the Louisville area. When to expect this storm, and I'm going to talk about impacts including ice and snow accumulation coming up next. And why the mystery of a missing Louisville UPS pilot is even more puzzling now that police found his remains. Good evening, everyone. The big story of the night, a winter storm watch now in effect for our area. We've got the latest school closings and delays. Keep an eye on the bottom of your screen there, and Mark Weinberg's going to have your forecast in just a few moments. But first tonight, we have crews covering three homicides, both with new developments just in the past hour. WDRV's Danielle Lam is live in Charlestown, where a teenager is accused of killing another teen. But we begin tonight with WDRV's Ryan Cummings, where a man was killed in Louisville. Ryan, what can you tell us? Hey guys, officers would not confirm that the victim here had been shot. That's what we heard from Metro Safe earlier, but the only thing that officers are talking to us and telling us right now, Dwight Mitchell, the spokesperson, is saying that a black man has been found dead inside of a car with some sort of trauma, and the LMPD crime unit just arrived here on scene. Police are investigating at Manslick Road and Nichols Drive. It looks like this is some sort of an apartment complex. We're also just right near 7th Street and Berry Boulevard. The officers were called here around 8.30 tonight. There were at least 12 squad cars when we got here around 9. Uh, but now, as you can see, only a few of them are left. We have not learned too much about the victim. A relative did tell me that it was her cousin. We've learned that it's a black man, again, found inside a car with some sort of trauma. Now, Louisville police are also investigating another deadly shooting tonight, not far from here, actually less than five minutes away on West Whitney, and we are told that a, f a female is dead there. Um, but spokesperson Dwight Mitchell again says he is not sure yet if these two are connected because they happened very close to each other and not far um, apart in time. As always, he said anyone with information is asked to call the anonymous crime tip line. That number is 574-LMPD. Live in South Louisville, Ryan Cummings, WDRB News. All right, Ryan, thank you. And as you heard Ryan mention, it has been a violent night in Louisville just about 15 minutes after the incident that Ryan spoke about. Police were called to a second homicide less than two miles away. Police say the woman who was found at that scene has died. We do have another crew headed that way. We'll bring you more information as we get it at 1030 as well. Meanwhile, in Charlestown, Indiana, a 14-year-old is dead, shot and killed this afternoon. WDRV's Danielle Lama tells us about the 16-year-old accused of pulling the trigger. Danielle. The teen suspect is being held here at the Clark County Juvenile Detention Center tonight. The sheriff's office says they were called to the scene at around 1130 this morning near Charlestown. It happened at a subdivision off State Road 62, referred to as Rolling Hills or Rocketwood. Officials say when they arrived, they found a 14 year old boy dead and they now believe a 16 year old shot him. Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll wouldn't say what led up to the shooting, but says the two teens knew each other. He tells us the suspect will be charged with reckless homicide. Kind of maybe falls a little bit in the realm of uh, it wasn't necessarily accidental, but there was no intent to take a life. It's just that reckless act caused a life to be taken. And the sheriff's office says it is still early in the investigation. The suspect's charges could be changed and other people could also potentially face charges. We're live tonight in Clark County. Danielle Lama, WDRB News. All right, Danielle, thank you. This just round one. Many people waiting to learn more about the winter weather. The next batch, anyhow, headed our way. Mark Weinberg tells us what's going on. It looks like more snow than first thought. You know, David, it's been interesting, and David and I have been talking a little bit off air in terms about how the computer models will work on a storm system and whether they're reliable, why we trust them. Some of the computer models are upping snow as we go through the uh, evening runs here tonight. Is that reliable? Some of the computer models are reliable, and they're getting within more of their accuracy range now. So there'll be more of, a, I think, an accurate pull and forecast from the computer models going forward. And I will tell you, up to this point, it's been a very very difficult forecast. Looking at the snow that we saw in this last storm, 3.7 officially from Louisville, it takes us for the year up to 6.3. So we're now over half of what we normally see for a season, which is 
Three was really the popular total around the area. We saw it in New Albany, Litchfield. We saw it in Shepherdsville. Uh, one of the bigger numbers was Bonneville at five inches of snow. That was the tallest snowfall total that we got. Winter storm watch here for Thursday night and for Friday. My thoughts on this? My thoughts are the Weather Service have a pretty good product out here on this one. And this is a, a very well-placed winter storm watch. Does include Louisville. 23 is temperature right now. Northeast wind at 7 miles an hour. So there's a lot of cold out there. From a snow perspective, this is pulled well away from our area. So our first storm is now gone. The next storm taking shape in the center part of the U.S. And this one, from an intensity standpoint of what we saw last night, last night was easy to forecast in that we knew it was going to be all snow. Track was pretty clear. This next storm, there's much more moisture on, but the track has been swinging a little bit. It's not going to get here tonight. You don't need to be worried about it in the morning. We'll drop to a low of 19 at 7 a.m., a little frozen fog possible. And remember, that can make our roads a little bit more slick. I'm going to go through the timeline so you know when to expect the freezing rain and snow for parts of our area and detail accumulations coming up in this newscast. All right. Thank you, Mark. Meanwhile, the snow today means no school for JCPS students tomorrow. WDRB's Travis Ragsdale explains why officials canceled school and the challenge that road crews are facing in these next couple of days. Travis? Lindsay, it's already been a long week for road crews here in Louisville, and depending on what happens on Friday, it could get even longer. Before the sun was up, crews were out on the road, and that continues Wednesday night. Uh, overnight, they will treat as needed uh, whatever uh, issues may come up, uh, spot check and or uh, salt and or plow as things may be uh, necessary. With snow still falling and many roads in poor condition, JCPS canceled school. As you uh, go home from work or go to work in the morning, you may not understand why we didn't have school, but if you check back in the back roads, like I said, in these subdivisions and inside these neighborhoods, you're going to find very slick conditions. School officials once again surveyed the situation Wednesday afternoon. We sent our 13 bus compounds with approximately 30 people out onto the roads this afternoon and really looked at the areas that Metro is not responsible for or are not part of the are the main routes and what they found wasn't good we found 900 roads that were slick and would be impassable for a school bus tomorrow so for the second day in a row jcps is out for thursday and friday could also be in jeopardy we'll continue to monitor the uh, weather for friday january 22nd which sadly is not looking very optimistic in our sites right now as well. For crews trying to clear the roads, a busy day Wednesday may mean less work when and if that next storm hits. We're hoping that uh, some of the salt that we use today will still be on the road Thursday and we won't need to pre-treat for a Friday evening event. So we might have a lot of chemical left over from today. As far as that decision for JCPS goes on Friday, we're told that likely won't be made until early on Friday morning. But it's not just Jefferson County dealing with problems on the back roads. As WDRB's Fallon Glick explains, other counties are canceling school for the same reasons. So many of these rural Bullock County roads have endless turns and curves, making it very dangerous for drivers. And about half of all Bullock County school bus drivers have to travel these roads to pick up students. The road that I live on was quite a bit um, uh, nerve wracking. It's a winter story Corey Schaefer knows all too well, living off a rural Bullock County road for 10 years. With so many twisting roads, there's uncertainty around every corner. I refer to it as death to the left and death to the right. We live up on a ridge, so I mean, either way, I mean, if, if, if it isn't cleared off, it gets uh, uniquely um, entertaining. Bullock County school officials drove his road and many others checking out the snow and icy conditions. Then early Wednesday afternoon, a second day of school was canceled for Thursday. It's just to the point where, especially in the rural areas, we know that that those aren't going to be cleared and that's usually where our trouble areas are. Trouble for drivers, but smiles for students. We've been uh, playing in the snow and we've been cleaning off other people's cars. I have been sledding. Schaefer's children and their neighbor ran around and had a snowball fight while he very carefully made the drive home from work. We start out and we try to get all the major roads, the county roads. Then from the major 
we go to the secondary roads. The Bullock County Road Department hopes to have all roads cleared and salted by Thursday morning. But in the meantime, we're going to build a snowman. The Schaefers are just going to enjoy the aftermath of a winter storm. And whether or not students will have school on Friday still has to be determined. Reporting in Bullock County, Fallon Glick, WDRB News. And to find out if your school is closed or delayed, sign up for Snowfox Text Alerts. Just go to WDRB.com and click on Weather. Then click on Snowfox Text Alerts at the top of your screen. You can also stay ahead of the weather with the WDRB Weather app. Does this cold winter weather have you thinking about a bright, sunny getaway? The town of Clarksville wants to help. How it plans to transform this aquatic center and bring the Caribbean to you. And the new bill that could make LMPD officers work 12-hour shifts. State lawmakers have advanced a bill that would allow police officers in Louisville to work 12-hour shifts, and it would not cost taxpayers about a million dollars in overtime. Uh, this plan would mean longer shifts for officers, but more time in between shifts. It's getting support from both the LMPD and the FOP. Lawmakers say the change would help officers balance their work and family life. Full passage is expected in the Kentucky House. So with snow on the ground, summer seems a long way away, but a popular hotspot in Clarksville will not be open at all this year. WDRB's Ryan Cummings tonight shows us what's being added, improved, and removed at the city's Family Aquatic Center. It's hard to imagine summer when pools like this are filled with snow, but the Clarksville Parks and Rec Department is planning a major overhaul, redeveloping its family aquatic center with a Caribbean theme. Instead of them coming off the slide into a pool, it's going to be a water runoff. Ken Conklin with the Parks Department gave us a tour of the center that opened in 1995, a facility more than 20 years old with outdated and failing equipment. The pool even shut down a few days last year after a six-inch pipe broke underground. You know, more competition, you've got New Albany, now at the new facility. You've got Jeffersonville has their nice facility and then you've got Kentucky Kingdom back opening back up and then you got more people with backyard pools so there's just uh, we need to change with the times and update a little bit. In 2015 the Parks Department spent nearly $20,000 on pool chemicals and more than $26,000 on utilities. The new pump system could cut those numbers in half. Upgrades that'll cost roughly $4 million, covered by property tax revenue, mainly from businesses. Funds have been approved. All we have to do now is bid the project out and get work started. That work includes a splash pad, Conklin says, that's unique to southern Indiana, with play structures and discovery streams. They'll also redo the water slides and try to keep admission costs close to what they are now. The new design will require three lifeguards instead of 12, have a new concession space, smoking area, and birthday pavilion. It's just going to be an amazing facility for families, and that's what we're hoping will come to visit our center. The upgraded water park is set to open in 2017. In Clarksville, Indiana, Ryan Cummings, WDRB News. Well, you can see advanced track here clearly showing snow in our area. It absolutely takes it into Louisville and the computer models are showing more snow. I'm going to detail a timeline so you know when to expect the ice and the snow next. And not everything closes for snow. The crew of people who work around the clock to help businesses. Here's what Bill Lamb had to say on the last point of view. The outrage sparked by President Obama's recent executive order that closes loopholes that make it far too easy for dangerous or incompetent people to get their hands on firearms is, well, outrageous. Nothing in this order even hints at taking away anyone's guns, but it does provide common sense procedures regarding their sale that only irresponsible radicals could oppose. I wish the majority of gun owners, the responsible ones, would stand up and be heard. And here's what you had to say. Thank God Obama's getting something passed so we can find out who actually needs a gun and people who are unstable don't need them. I believe with every regulation that gets put on these guns, the closer we become to getting them taken away. I disagree with Obama's executive orders. What part of shall not be infringed upon? does he not get the only justification i can see to oppose background checks on gun sales would be if you're a person who can't pass a background check why can they not enforce the gun laws that are currently on the books that seems to me to be the biggest problem the liberals and Obama's ultimate goal is to disarm America. They had to do this with small steps. 
Mark Weinberg's WBRB weather forecast has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. Just one thing I want to mention here, if you're looking for weather information on the go, the WDRB weather app is very easy to download. It's on your app store if you have an Android operating system or an iPhone. It gives you my forecast, our forecast. If you watch us and you trust us, you get our forecast. We update it multiple times through the day. You're going to get the zoomable radar, which you will love and use a lot over the next couple days in our blog. What we get to talk about on TV gives me about four minutes in the blog. There's no limit. So we are very detailed. Another way, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm very, very accessible on Twitter. It's Mark Weinberg WX. Remember, Mark with a C. And on Facebook, Mark Weinberg. Just click like or follow when you get there. And when I'm done with the newscast, I'll see you on there. So as we look going forward here, we've got a winter storm watch. This one goes through Clark, Floyd, Harrison County, and then covers all of our Kentucky counties. I will say all with the exception of Carroll County. Uh, this goes Thursday night through Friday. Is this a good winter storm watch from the National Weather Service? Absolutely. The watch normally is where they have the highest confidence and then they'll upgrade tomorrow into the winter storm warning or winter weather advisory as necessary. I've been asked, could this get into a blizzard warning? No, I don't think our winds would be strong enough to meet criteria to get us into that. So I want to be clear on that one. The snow from earlier today is off to the east. We've said goodbye to that. And the storm now that we're talking about is in the center of the country. The reason that's so important is when a storm gets in the U.S., we can send balloons into it. This is the first time really the storm has been totally in the U.S. We've had a full initialization of the computer models, and this means that the data will become more reliable. And the computer models that are showing more snow, I lend more credibility because of that. 23 degrees, we've got a dew point of 16 and a northeast wind at 7. Simply put, it's going to be cold. The real difference between the current storm that we just saw and the next one is you're starting to see a little bit warmer to the south, 30 in Bowling Green, and the next storm, since it's coming out of the central parts of the U.S., has access to these temperatures near freezing. Just remember, we've got a solid snowpack in our area. It only has a little bit of time to, do, uh, to uh, melt tomorrow afternoon, and that's going to, in a sense, lock in that cold. This is as we go through the night tonight. You can see our skies. Uh, generally mostly cloudy, although I think there's an opportunity late tonight and early tomorrow for us to go into a partly cloudy sky. Data suggests we'll go up to a high of around 32 degrees, then this storm system approaches. And obviously I want to spend a lot of time in this weather on the timeline. When does this start for who? Okay, let's go through it. We're looking at midnight on Friday, and you can see the freezing rain, and it is potentially a lot developing by 3 a.m., well, I say 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Thursday night. Continues through 5 a.m. in the southern part of our area, and you can see it's stubborn. Louisville looks like it's going to start between 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. on Friday morning, and you'll notice once it gets going, it goes. This is a stop at 1, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. This is a long-duration event. By midnight on Friday night, we're starting to wind down the snow into snow showers, but this goes on for a long period of time. Let me address ice accumulations. I've got light icing potential from E-Town through Frankfurt, and I've got icing up to a half an inch from Campbellsville, Munfordville through Columbia. With winds of up to 25, 30 miles an hour, that is enough ice to cause some power lines, trees to go down in this system. 19 degrees and mainly cloudy for tonight, light easterly wind. Tomorrow afternoon, highs in there at 33 degrees, few breaks in the clouds early. Tomorrow night, our system moves into the area. We've got an 80% chance of snow on Friday through early on Saturday. I've increased Saturday's snow chance to 50%. That's the timeline. How much to expect in your area coming up in about 10 minutes. In tonight's business news, snow creates problems for all of us, but for businesses that can't close, it's even more of a hassle. WDRB Stefan Johnson talked to one crew working around the clock to clear the snow. You know, we're in a service-oriented business, so um, we're in operation regardless of what the weather is. Clarence Benbow is vice president of Rogers, Orchard and Lyons Funeral Home on South Preston. When there's a snow event, we're, uh, you know, have to take proper steps to, to keep our business in, in operation. The funeral home is serving several grieving families this week, so the snow has to go. We, you know, hire an outside company to take care of that for us. That outside company is KLB Inc. We got uh, nursing homes, high-rise apartment buildings, and things of that nature. The man on the plow is the owner, Keith Booker. He has crews across the city cleaning parking lots and sidewalks and says today the workload is double. And with it being Wednesday night, 
We got a lot of churches that we take care of, so we got to get them next. So we have everybody ready for Bible study tonight. And with the potential for another round of winter weather coming later this week, Booker is hoping for a little divine intervention. Yes, I need it. If not, both Booker and Benbo have a strong plan B. Get everything ready for Friday, and then we'll go out and pre-salt. Hope for the best and you know, plan for the worst. In Louisville, I'm Stefan Johnson, WDRB News. So if you are expecting a package from UPS, you might have to wait a little bit longer. A company spokesperson says the snow is causing some big problems for Worldport in Louisville. UPS is working to move packages as soon as possible, but some shipments are being delayed. To track your package, we've got a link for you on our website. Just go to WDRB.com and click on the button. Actually, some booze today in the background during the closing bell. Another brutal day on Wall Street. More investors jumping ship and putting their money in the safety of bonds and gold because of worries about the global economy. The Dow, which was down 565 points earlier today, recovers lots of that, but still finishes 249 down to close at 15,766. The Nasdaq drops just five points, closing at 4471. And that's tonight's business. They're supposed to be police officers, you know. They need to be dressed like police officers. Was it a vicious crime or a case of self-defense? Why a friend of the man accused of shooting a Shively police officer says things aren't what they seem. And turning the tables, the criminals who tried carjacking the wrong mom. Louisville providing plenty of first half highlights against Florida State. We'll check out the best of them and update the second half later in sports. It's Tommy the Toilet again for the guys at ASI Plumbing. The locally owned and operated only does plumbing company that you can really depend on. That's why I and all my friends love it when ASI is in the home. Whether it's your sump pump, a water heater, or a simple drain problem, go to ASIplumbing.com. Hello there. Hello. Oh. How do you like the car you're sitting in right now? It's so nice. I think it's beautiful. I like this. You're sitting in a truck that's its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Really? I didn't know they did that. Woo! Hey guys, who are we talking to you? So you think that's a good thing to get auto show bonus cash? Who doesn't like having cash handed to them? Current qualified lessees can get this well-equipped Chevy Equinox LT for around $159 per month. See your select Kentuckiana dealers. It's your last chance, the final week to save on all 2015 floor models during Mattress and More's incredible 2015 model clearance. Save up to 70% off gel memory foam queen sets. Now at $296, last chance power buy. Save $500 on Sealy Euro pillow top queen sets, just $498. Plus get a free flat screen TV and the number one selling Tempur-Pedic. Now with $300 bonus cash for a free 40-inch TV plus five years interest-free. Shop final week savings now at Mattress and More. This year, you can have it all and save big. During the final days of the New Year sale at Furniture Row, find incredible deals throughout the stores with special savings on all room groups, home entertainment, and kids' beds. Plus, score five years no interest financing and get even more bang for your buck. Start the new year off with style and savings. But hurry, the New Year sale ends Thursday, January 21st. Over 40 years ago, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis helped establish the Jefferson Awards for public service. WDRB News invites you to nominate deserving volunteers in our area, and we will present a Jefferson Award each month. Every recipient will be eligible for the national awards held each spring. Go to WDRB.com and click on the button to make a nomination. The Jefferson Awards, sponsored by River City Bank. WDRB Weather, sponsored by the Swope family of dealerships in Elizabethtown. The Swope brand. We started in Elizabethtown, we're staying here. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I make the drive because I bought my first car in 1999, and when I walked in that door, they treated me like I was family. I drive to E-Town because they have a better selection than what I get here. I'm a working mother, six days a week, 10 hours a day, and I will always take the time for the short drive to buy my next car. Come see what she knows. Swope, the only name you need for everything automotive. Our big story tonight, tracking that snowstorm that's coming our way. And meteorologist Mark Weinberg will let you know exactly what you can expect. We're going to have the forecast for you in about three and a half minutes.
Meanwhile, a WDRB news alert tonight. Police are on the scene of a third violent incident in Louisville tonight. This latest shooting happened within the last 10 minutes. Metro Safe tells us two people were shot at Clio Avenue and Butchard Avenue. This is near the Louisville airport. We have a crew headed to the scene right now. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Meanwhile, that is the latest in what's become a very violent night. One man was killed at 7th and Berry just after 8 o'clock tonight. Police will only say he died of some sort of trauma. And just 15 minutes later, another homicide. WDRB's Fallon Glick is on the scene of that investigation, less than two miles away from the other. Fallon, what can you tell us? Well, Lindsay, Day not a whole lot of this fatal homicide either. Now, police do tell us that the female victim in the shoot now. All right, having trouble with Fallon right there, but we will move on now. Another news tonight, a case of self-defense or a cold-blooded crime. A Shively police officer still recovering tonight after he was shot. Only on WDRB, Emily Muir talked to the suspect's roommate in the house where it happened, who says there's way more to this story than what meets the eye. It happened on Friday, January 8th at this house in Shively. Police say they were there to serve a search warrant. It's unclear why, but what happened after the officers went in the house sent two people to the hospital with gunshot wounds, including Shively detective Wes Singleton. And then uh, I heard just uh, the gunshots start going off. Police say 53-year-old Kenneth Probus shot the officer four times in the legs. Singleton is now recovering in rehab. Officers shot back, injuring Probus, who is still recovering in the hospital. Probus's roommate, who didn't want to be identified, tells us Probus thought someone was breaking into the house and that's why he started shooting. They're supposed to be police officers, you know. They need to be dressed like police officers. Not come in with a UFL hoodie on, bust in somebody's door. They did not holler there at the door. The roommate said Probus works night shift and was sleeping in his locked bedroom when officers went in. He says Probus has certificates for all his guns. He says he's a former firefighter and a Marine Corps veteran who served in Desert Storm. The man has never heard one harsh word at anybody I've ever known. There are bullet holes inside the home where gunfire was exchanged. As a result, Probus is facing attempted murder charges and Loretta Harris is facing charges for trafficking methamphetamine. Police say she she had an outstanding warrant, but it's unclear if that's what police were originally there for. Probus has hired an attorney and is exploring his legal options. Records show he's not a convicted felon. Emily Muir, WDRB News. Well, the eight-month search for a missing Louisville UPS pilot ends with his remains found in eastern Jefferson County. WDRB's Gilbert Corsi tells us why police think they may never know how he died and why his family thinks they already do. Was it suicide? Part of the uh, skeletal remains were recovered. Or something else? The unfortunate part about the case is that uh, it took us so long to recover the body. And in that process, we lost quite a bit of evidentiary value. A day after LMPD discovered the remains of Mike Kimsey, detectives have no clear answer on how he died. The 48-year-old husband and father disappeared May 29th. We're told Kimsey's body was found somewhere in this wooded area off the Village Green subdivision. It's only about two blocks away from his home. Police say Kimsey's remains were likely in the area the entire time, but were not found until this past weekend when an animal left bones in a neighbor's yard. We can't give either side of the family any type of closure because we're unable to answer certain questions uh, that we would have been able to answer had we found him sooner. Little comfort to Kimsey's mother. I think he was murdered. I really do. I think somebody's done something to him. Joanne Kimsey says her son expressed fear for his safety days before he went missing. He called me two days before. And he said, Mother, something really bad is going to happen, and I have been trying to figure out how to get me and out of the house. Kimsey served 10 years in the United States Air Force and worked more than a decade for UPS, but hadn't flown recently as he was still recovering from hip surgeries. And we're waiting for labs to come back, and, and maybe that gives us some more insight on what actually happened. Suicide or something else? There's just a puzzle piece out there that's not being put together yet. For Kimsley's loved ones, there is no peace until the answer is found. Gilbert Corsi, WDRB News. Kimsey's parents have hired a private detective to help figure out answers about what happened to their son. Mark Weinberg's WDRB weather forecast has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society.
We've got a winter storm watch that goes in effect tomorrow night and lasts through Friday. This includes a huge chunk of our area. What does a watch mean? A watch means that the weather service within that watch period tomorrow night through Friday is expecting more than four inches of snow within this area. Tomorrow what they're going to do is upgrade. They'll upgrade into the winter weather advisory, likely for some of our southern Indiana counties, and then likely to go winter storm warning for a good chunk of our area, which I think will likely include all of these winter storm watch or light blue counties. The warning means that it's eminent. More than four inches of snow will occur in 24 hours. First system, gone. Want to spend a lot, a lot of time on the next system. A couple things to note. Could this be called a winter storm? It is. Are we going to see significant snow? Yes. Uh, is everybody going to see significant snow? No. And that's really what this weather is going to talk a lot about. 23 is the temperature, northeast wind, 7 miles an hour. And that's the thing. We're going to keep a northeast wind at the surface through the entire duration of this next storm system. While we will see some warmer starting to surge aloft, you can see that northeasterly fetch will be pulling in very cold air. So at the surface, we'll be pulling in cold, aloft will be pushing some slightly warmer. The question is who's going to win out on this? And that's really where this becomes key on the storm track. The track looks very clear that it's going to go through, let's say, around Nashville and then towards, uh, let's say, far southeastern part of Kentucky. The first storm the one that just went through was on the northern branch. It had no access to Gulf moisture. This next storm system does. And that just basically ups the potential significantly. And that's where we go. We look at advanced track. Here's the now. We're, clo we're cold. We're generally cloudy. By tomorrow morning, just to note, we could see some patchy frozen fog develop. Use some caution if you see it out there. With temperatures below freezing, you know that can make things a little more slick. We're generally cloudy during the afternoon tomorrow. We're looking at temperatures only peaking at around 32. This thing starts, for me in my opinion, between 1 and 3 a.m. in our southern counties. And I think it definitively starts as freezing rain. And you can see in the onset of the storm, there is this moderate duration freezing rain scenario that continues to develop areas like Litchfield, Munfordville, Campbellsville, Greensburg. And I'm concerned you're going to see icing. About a half an inch of ice with wind, there's no question is enough to take down some trees and power lines. In Louisville, we're looking at a start time. I would say my calculations are going 8 to 10 a.m. on Friday. We're going to tweak that a little bit. But what you'll notice is that we start snow. We continue snow. And you're looking at some darker areas in here. Notice in particular, I'd say like Hardinsburg, like E-Town, Bardstown, Frankfurt. You stay in this heavy snow for hours and hours and hours. And this run is now taking that snow all the way into our northern counties. So this run has drifted way further north. You're looking at snow continuing through about midnight and then still snow showers going on at 3 a.m. at 5 a.m. on Saturday. As we look towards 7 a.m., we're still dealing with snow showers and then it winds down by around midday before pulling away. Ice accumulations up to a half an inch for our southern counties. No question this can cause problems. And I want to spend a lot of time on the snow accumulations. The northern is the most uncertain, and that's why I have the zero to four for Paoli, Seymour, Madison. Four to eight, this is an increase, including Tell City, Louisville, through around Shelbyville. I've increased into the six to 12 category for areas like E-Town. Uh, let's include uh, around um, just north of Munfordville, and then I'll include areas like, let's say, Springfield through Greensburg and Campbellsville. Uh, the, remember when you look at these. Please don't focus on the highest number. Don't say, oh, Louisville's going to see eight inches. Remember, it's a range. We're going to get in between those numbers and Jude Redfield's in early tomorrow morning, and we will continue to tweak them and dial this in. 19 degrees, mainly cloudy tonight with flurries. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll be seeing some breaks early, generally cloudy in the afternoon with a high of 33. You know how this is going to unfold on Friday. We're going to see snow. It's going to accumulate. This is a snow system for Louisville, and we're going to see quite a bit. Saturday coming to an end on the snow. And then on Monday, with a snowpack in place and temperatures cool, if that system starts early enough, we'll see some freezing rain. Bottom line is i got my hands full the next few days. Well, it just does not yeah. stop. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, don't mess with a mother and her child. Some would-be carjackers in Florida tried stealing the wrong car. Got to see this video. Alex de Armas shows us the video of a mom who stopped at nothing to protect her kids. Surveillance video shows the two men sprint across the Tom Thumb gas station parking lot and try to carjack a woman on the other side of the gas pump. She locked herself inside. The men then try to carjack a woman who owns this red car. One gets in the passenger seat, the other in the driver's seat. But the victim fights back and rips a ski mask off the carjacker. 
The victim had reason to fight back. She was a mom, and what that bad guy didn't know, in the back seat of that car were two kids, and she wasn't going to let them be taken. So she fought, she dragged the guy out of the car, and they both ran away like cowards. Hialeah police say the would-be carjackers, Juan Carlos Gonzalez and Nicholas Rosado, ran to a getaway car driven by Rebecca Utria. Their high-speed getaway caught the attention of a Hialeah police officer. A Hialeah police patrolman who had no idea of what had just happened sees this car speeding, follows the car. The car ends up crashing against a fence. All three were arrested and booked on charges of attempted carjacking and fleeing police. Working? No, I'm in the process. The judge has ordered all three to stay away from the two women they are accused of trying to carjack if they post bond. That was Alex DeArmas reporting all of the suspects are being held on a $25,000 bond. You'll soon have a chance to see that life-size version of Noah's Ark. Tickets are now on sale for the July 7th opening of the Ark Encounter. This is in Williamstown, Kentucky, just south of Cincinnati. Tickets cost $40 for adults, $28 for children, and $31 for seniors. The organization in charge of the attraction, Answers in Genesis, says over a million people are expected to tour the Ark this first year that it's open. Big changes coming, the giant makeover being given to the SAT college entrance exam. We learned some dance moves from Gaston of Beauty and the Beast. Keith Kaiser is there as the Louisville Landmark begins frying up seafood for its 92nd year. The latest on a system that could bring ice and heavy snow tomorrow beginning at 5. A southern Indiana teen fatally shot, another arrested. Plus, a man frozen for hours is brought back to life. But how doctors did it, like science fiction. Tonight at 11. <laughs> the X-Files premieres this Sunday after the NFC Championship. Antenna TV is TV how it was meant to be. When neighbors come over for dinner, it's where friends are family. And you got a friend for life. Trust me, I'm just, okay? And family is everything. Antenna TV. Antenna TV in Louisville on 41.2 and Cable 187. It's the Golf Expo this weekend. LouisvilleGolfExpo.com There's just something special that makes Simple Truth and Simple Truth Organic a natural part of every family. Great food is something all generations can enjoy together. And you'll find hundreds of smart choices, even brand new products for baby and your home. Just look for the Simple Truth green circle on the label. Simple Truth. Putting simple within reach. Right now, save up to $40 with digital coupons at simpletruth.com. Hurt in a car accident? Car repairs? Medical bills? Gone. I made that call. I'm so happy. 800-800-4600. All I did was call. We get results. Love me some Hughes and Coleman. 800-800-4600. It couldn't be any easier. 800-800-4600. I made that call. 800-800-4600. Hughes and Coleman simplified my life. What are you waiting for? 800-800-4600. In 1934, Steak and Shake decided the world didn't need another hamburger. They needed a steak burger, so they used 100% beef. Quick sear to seal in the flavor you'll only get from a steak burger. Steak and Shake, home of the original steak burger. WDRB News is here for you. Our crews are spread all across the metro this morning, giving you a live look at road conditions. A dedicated team of reporters working around the clock. As you can see, two tractor trailers, one jackknife. The experienced journalists of WDRB News, helping you to be ready for what winter throws your way. Bryant Heating and Cooling. My furnace went out and it was a cold winter night. We'll have someone right out. They had to take the old furnace from out of my hall. They had to tear up the floor, but they did a perfect job and I had heat that night. 20 years ago, I had a floor furnace that went out. Bryant was the only people that would come out and look at it. They fixed it and this is my second furnace. One call away, they're always here when I need them. My name is Earlene. I've been a Bryant customer for over 20 years. 
A new report shows hundreds of thousands of immigrants have overstayed their welcome. The Department of Homeland Security reports over a half million people who entered the U.S. legally later overstayed their visas. Many with expired visas come from places with links to terrorism, 11 percent from Afghanistan, 7 percent from Iraq, and another 7 percent from Yemen. Homeland Security officials were questioned on Capitol Hill today. The federal government is on strike. They are deliberately and systematically refusing to deal with visa overstays. Uh, this is unbelievable. The report comes as the Supreme Court considers whether the president has the power to bypass Congress and grant deportation amnesty to millions of illegal immigrants. Big changes are coming to the SAT college entrance exam. This weekend is the last run for the current format. Because starting in March, the SAT is getting a giant makeover. The College Board says the new exam will focus on what students are learning in the classroom and analysis by students. There will no longer be a penalty for guessing on the exam, and the essay portion will be optional. And opinions are mixed on this one. Chris likes it, saying change the test so that it revolves around common core mentality. But John does not like it. He says dumb down everything. It's the new politically correct thing to do. We want to know what you think about this. Join the conversation right now on the WDRB Facebook page. We also want to know what Tom Lane thinks of uh, the cards taken on FSU tonight. I think the cards look pretty darn good tonight. <laughs> they have, they have looked good at home virtually the whole season. Got it going again tonight against the Seminoles. The highlights on the way. Louisville Athletic Club is taking members on a life-changing journey, and you can be a part of it. LAC has the very best equipment, group fitness classes, personal training, CrossFit, playroom, cafe, free tanning, and so much more for less than a dollar a day. Come see what your fitness center should be. WDRB.com is fast, accurate news at your fingertips. More journalists. More resources. So you not only get more stories, you get the whole story. Any device, anywhere, anytime you need it. WDRB.com. For softer skin and cleaner clothes, get Water Boss Water Softeners from Menards. This 18,000 grain unit removes chlorine and hardness and is great for both city and well water. Just $399. Or step up to this 38,000 grain unit. It's only $449. Finish your bathroom with a complete toilet from Elger. They're easy to assemble and include everything you need in one box. The tall elongated Diplomat is $168. Save big money at Menards. It's your last chance, the final week to save on all 2015 floor models during Mattress and More's incredible 2015 model clearance. Save up to 70% off gel memory foam queen sets. Now at $296, last chance power buy. Save $500 on Sealy Euro pillow top queen sets, just $498. Plus get a free flat screen TV and the number one selling Tempur-Pedic. Now with $300 bonus cash for a free 40-inch TV plus five years interest-free. Shop final week savings now at Mattress and More. Value City Furniture presents how to make the most of every moment. First, take any moment and make it your own. Boop. There's a moment. I know. Another one. I know. There's another. Ugh. This one needs help. Head to Value City Furniture, yes. where you can always find furniture that makes any moment perfect at prices that are perfect for everyone. Perfect. And that's how to buy the perfect piece at Value City Furniture. WDRB Sports Page, sponsored by Kentucky One Health. I was overweight. The doctor said it could threaten my life. Now I can't play with my kids. My blood pressure and cholesterol have improved. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I can walk up the stairs without running out of breath. My joints don't hurt anymore. I feel like a new person. I feel like a new person. I look like a new person. I'm finally living the life I want to live. You owe it to yourself to learn about the health benefits of weight loss surgery. Attend a free seminar from Kentucky One Health to see if it's right for you. One of Rick Pitino's mantras for this year's team is to take care of home games, get at least a split on the road. Louisville trying to remain unbeaten at the KFC Yum Center tonight as they host Florida State. Quentin Snyder scoring at the beginning of both halves, including that three ball. And this one you got to see a couple times. Off the Damian Lee miss, Donovan Mitchell flying in, stealing the ball and throwing it down. The explosive freshman igniting the Yum Center crowd. 
giving U of L a 24 to 15 lead. Lee doesn't give any second chances on this one. 12 point lead after that three. Then off the pick and roll, Shinano Onowaku off the bounce from Lee. Mitchell making it up around the hoop, hangs and scoops up the reverse. Lee then turning defense to offense, the steal, the burst, the dunk. And Mitchell closing out the first half with this long lob to Honest Mahmoud, 14 point edge at halftime. It is now 70 to 41. Louisville very much in control, about eight minutes to go. North Carolina next in line for the revolving top spot in college hoops. Tar Heels handling Wake Forest tonight. Bryce Johnson powering the way. Forward is 10 double doubles now after totaling 27 points and 11 rebounds, scoring in a variety of ways. UNC has 10 straight wins. And at 6-0, is off to its best conference start in 15 years, 83-68 over the Demon Deacons. Kentucky will try to get things done on the road tomorrow night at Arkansas. The Cats and Razorbacks both 3-2 in the league, tied for fifth in the SEC. Wildcats just 1-3 in true road games, including Saturday's defeated Auburn. Assistant coach John Robick was asked if it's fair to compare this team to the 2013-14 Cats that also had their struggles away from home and then caught fire in the NCAA tournament after going in as an eight seed. We've been on such a great run here that when you have a little peaks and valleys and you have a couple valleys, you know, we've only, I believe, lost four games so far. It's, it's somewhat unusual around here since we've been here uh, to be in January and have that. Uh, there's no need to panic. This has been a process, and it's been a, it's been a process that we're trying to really get through. Um, and it's, it's still a work in progress, if that makes any sense at all. Um, I, I think that, you know, I don't think there's a whole lot of comparisons that you can make right now uh, to it. We just got to see where it, where it ends up. It's more so about us getting, you know, used to it as a team. And, um, you know, at home, we are very comfortable playing at home. Uh, I feel like we have more energy when we play at home. So we have to learn how to bring that same energy. Indiana's 103-69 demolition of Illinois last night, headlined by three-pointers and giveaways. Yogi Ferrell led the long ball onslaught with five of Indiana's record 19 threes on the night. Also became the Hoosiers' all-time assist man. Number of 546 to Max Bielfeld in the first half there, one of his nine on the evening. And then he came off to the rousing ovation, declared the champ by his coach. Uh, yeah, I know he was going to do that. Um, I thought he was just trying to give me a handshake, but, uh, you know, that's pretty cool, man. You know, all the fans cheering for me, and, you know, it just shows how special Hoosier Nation is, and, you know, all the fans are behind us. But it's the extra work that he puts in. It's the extra film work that he puts in. It's the way he's carrying his teammates with him. And rarely do you see him in a, you know, watching film on the road by himself. You know, there's a couple guys in there with him. And he sets the tone defensively, he sets the tone offensively. And what I love about him is he's incredibly happy for their success. What do these guys have to do with college basketball this year? They're part of the sports page. Next. When the unexpected happens, it can be devastating. But we're here to help. I'm attorney Darrell Isaacs, the hammer. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call Isaacs and Isaacs. Calling the hammer is the way to go. Down 458 Dr. Phil here. Join me tomorrow at 3 right here on WDRB. With all the medical bills and car repairs, things just aren't adding up. This can be so confusing. Just call Isaacs and Isaacs. I'm attorney Darrell Isaacs. The hammer. Calling the hammer is a way to go down four five eight one oh oh oh. Arby's two for five mix and matches back and better than ever. Unless you don't get the new loaded curly fries, in which case it's back and the same as ever. Arby's, we have the meat. Shop big January hot buys now at Furniture Liquidators. Save $300 on this best-selling Chase sectional in Mocha or Cafe with Chase available on either side. Now a $6.98 hot buy. Hot buy four-piece bedrooms with queen bed. Your choice, $5.99. Add a Sealy Posturepedic or Restonic Marvelous Middle Queen set. Hot buy price at $3.98 with up to 36 months no interest. Extra discounts for cash and free layaway till your tax check arrives. Only at Furniture Liquidators. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. 
I mean, I would call it a big deal. Headquarters for Michelin and BF Goodrich Tires, it is a big deal. We're also your headquarters for great service deals, like $25 off any two or $50 off any four-wheel brake services. Want in on the big deal? Visit your locally owned Big O Tire dealer today for exclusive rebates. Check out the latest vehicles from John Jones Auto Group in Corden, like the 2015 Dodge Durango. Stylish and plenty of room for your friends and family. Check out the 2016 Ram 1500, heavy duty and ready for any job. Or the 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. With cars, trucks, and SUVs to fit all your needs, we will help you find your next vehicle. John Jones Auto Group. You see so many because they paid so little. So you're the devil, and you've left hell behind to take a vacation in Los Angeles. Well, where else would I go? Lucifer, series premiere, Monday on Fox. Eric, it's the middle of the week, and being in the top five in college basketball is as tricky as walking down the sidewalk. We've had three top five teams already lose this week. What's going on in college basketball? I wish I could tell you I'd go to Vegas. You know, no more comment on that. But <laughs> I, really, it, it's been pretty astounding. The number of number ones that have fallen this season is already reaching record proportions. And at some point, I think we have to start asking, do we have the wrong top five in general? Are we, are, are we just ranking the wrong teams? But look, I think that we've talked about parity. We've been talking about it since the beginning of the season. There's no dominant team. And every team has flaws, and I think that's the main thing. Last year, Kentucky really didn't have a flaw. There was nothing wrong with that team. They had to, took an honest effort to beat them, but they really didn't have a huge deficiency in any area. There's not a team you can look at this year and pick, not pick out a weakness that you can try to exploit, and eventually they run into teams that exploit it. I think another two other things to mention. One is I don't think, other than Ben Simmons, and he's not doing much yeah. for LSU in terms of helping him win, we don't have enough superstars in college basketball this year who can really carry their guys. And another thing is the freshman class is not great. No. Freshmen have been so good in college basketball the last few years. But you look at this year's uh, McDonald's All-Americans, only two of them, just two, made the top 25 list for the Wooden Award. So the freshmen have not been as great as they've been in past years. It's an average to below average freshman class added up. Last year's Final yeah. Four teams this year are 11 and 12 in conference play. That's yeah. bad. Yeah, a lot of good guards out there, not very many really big time bigs. And that's, you're, you're starting to see it. It's going to be a fun march, I can tell you that. We're going to be writing about it. Just go to our website, go to WDRB.com and click on sports. We'll up by 28 with about five minutes to go. WDRB News at 11 next.